Hello everybody, hope you're all doing well. Thank you for joining me today to talk about why product managers shouldn't be striving for perfection in the workplace. Let's get started. My name is Samantha Narahari Sethi. I'm a product manager at House. Uh, for those of you that are unfamiliar with House, we are a home design inspiration platform. We also have a e-commerce marketplace at House that uh, sells home goods and furniture. And this is the team that I'm part of. Here at our marketplace, I specifically focus on repeat purchase behavior and the overall customer lifetime value. Um, if you'd like to connect with me later or ask any questions, you can find me on LinkedIn. Um, just look for me by my full name. So a little bit of background about me. Um, I started my career as an iOS developer for a banking client with TCS. Uh, here I was working on building iPhone and iPad applications for this banking client. I left that role to pursue my MBA. Um, I went to business school at the University of Arizona with the hopes of actually moving into tech consulting. Uh, so while I was in school and throughout my internship, I was introduced to the field of product management and decided to pursue that path instead. So out of school, I landed a product manager position at Overstock.com uh, on their mobile apps team, uh, thanks to my iOS dev background. So at Overstock, I was focused on customer acquisition and conversion on the app. So essentially getting people to download the app and make a purchase on the app. After Overstock, I moved on to Carfax to launch a new product for them from scratch. This is a, a new web-based product. It's a web-based marketplace. And my focus there was um, organic traffic growth and user engagement on the platform. So here's the agenda for today. We'll start off by defining uh, who a perfectionist is and how this might translate to your everyday life and work. We'll also talk about um, how a product manager's role is far from that of a perfectionist and why you should and need to embrace imperfection uh, in, as a product manager. So uh, are you a perfectionist? By definition, a perfectionist is someone who has a personality that strives for flawlessness. This um, often occurs by uh, fixating on imperfections, trying to control situations, uh, working really hard, and or being critical of themselves or, or others around them. Uh, do you relate to any of these, or at least uh, you know, in some degree? Uh, I know these seem a bit extreme, but these behaviors can actually translate uh, to your everyday work and life in, in a few ways. So let's ask ourselves a few questions. Do you put off doing something until the time is right or um, you have it all figured out and you can start uh, doing it and getting it done perfectly? Or when you think of an idea or a task, you either do it all or you don't do it at all. There's just no in between, like there's no like progressive steps. Or do you get upset when uh, you know you don't get the results that you wanted, um, even though you got some of the results, but not all? Um, and lastly, do you expect yourself to give your best in every situation and nothing short of perfect is acceptable? If you answer yes to you know any or most of these, then you are a perfectionist to some degree. Not that being a perfectionist is a bad thing, but you know, as a product manager, it is a required skill to be able to work in chaos, in uncertainty, and to react and pivot really quickly on the job. Perfection, uh, you know, for us at least, has been glamorized since our childhood. And as you progress in your journey as a product manager, you need to learn to embrace and practice imperfection. So let's look at how a perfectionist and a product manager skills are completely opposite. There you go. So as you can see, uh, just as you go down the line, some of the characteristics of a perfectionist are pretty much different from that of a product manager and what they're expected to do on their job every day. And today we'll just kind of go down the list just one by one and talk a little bit in detail about how you can tackle each of these perfectionist traits 
um, as a product manager, just some big little tips that you can do at work that could help you uh, just kind of combat some of these traits. So the first one we'll talk about is overcoming procrastination. Uh, this honestly needs a little bit of rewiring of the brain. So for me, uh, I am someone that I do procrastinate at times and usually when I don't know the right way to do something or I don't have all the details. So one way this translates to my job is in the form of writing product requirement documents or PRDs. I will wait till you know I knew all the details to get started and not share it with the team until it was all flushed out. So this is not ideal because you know it might take a while before you know every single thing about that uh, project. So one of the best advices to tackle this, and, and I read this online, is to simply get started. So, you know, start the document, you know, fill out the headers um, and all the info that you would need as part of the document, what, uh, you know, questions you have, what are the information you would need, uh, things like that. So basically, you want to empty your brain at every point onto the document. This way, you're tackling the document in, you know, bite-sized pieces versus taking the whole chunk as one. So just starting, um, you know, just getting started helps in a couple of ways. One, you understand the gaps in your knowledge, uh, you know, of the initiative itself. And two, it helps estimate the amount of work that is needed by you to fill out the doc and you will accordingly uh, plan your next steps. Three, it really reduces the anxiety within you to start and finish the document because you know, you're working on it, you're making progress. Um, and four, a lot of the features that you build as a product manager, they require like cross-functional work with other teams. So they can look at this document as you're working on it and start adding their inputs, their questions. Um, and essentially the work can get started a lot quicker because work is continuously happening on the document as, as you're working on it. Now, now, this example that I gave you was very specific. It's around a product requirements document, but this could be essentially any task you have. Um, all you have to do is just you know get started and tack it in bite-sized pieces. The next one is overcoming a all or nothing mindset. Um, as a product manager, you're responsible for launching new and exciting features. Sometimes these products have, you know, multiple elements or components, and each of these elements could be adding to the overall effort and the time needed to launch this feature. Now, the problem is, as a product manager, these new like features that you're looking to build and launch, they're often based on an understanding of your, your customer, of your product, of the data behind your product. So essentially, you're hypothesizing that launching this feature is going to be impactful and beneficial to both your product and your customer. You don't know that for sure uh, most of the time. So what we should be doing is testing our hypothesis in small increments, taking an iterative approach, meaning we should only be creating a MVP version of these products. So if you're not familiar, an MVP or a minimal viable product is basically the most minimum version of your feature that you can build and launch to test your hypothesis. So once your hypothesis proves right, you can go on adding other you know, bells and whistles to your feature and keep optimizing it to where you want it to the ideal state. This is also the most cost efficient approach to building a product because you know, imagine the opposite. Imagine you went all in on this new feature that took several weeks or months to build and it didn't create the impact that we thought it, it, it would. Or it is actually dragging down the metrics in a negative way. We don't want that. So what you want to do is take these small steps uh, while building your product. So again, taking an iterative approach. The third one is overcoming being heavily results oriented. Uh, you know, yes, of course, as a PM, uh, you know, you show impact by uh, through the results you're gaining. But, you know, like we talked about in the previous slide, our ideation of what we're going to build next of the next feature is typically based on a hypothesis, again, around our understanding of our customer, of our product, and how our product performs. Seldom we would know for sure that this product or feature is going to launch um, and drive up the metrics. 
So with the information that we have, you know, we launch a product. Sometimes it might not do well. And and that's okay. Because, you know, being a product manager is all about experimentation. If you don't get the results that you wanted, it is our responsibility as a product manager to, you know, pause, go back and understand why we didn't get the results that we wanted. You know, what could have gone wrong? It is, you know, is the feature not working as expected? Is, you know, something, is there a friction in the flow or in the user experience? So learn from that and pivot your strategy based on what you just learned rather than following the plan that you already had before. So make a plan for the follow-up build builds and you know test again. Again, being a product manager is all about experimentation. So you know most of the time we will not be going from you know zero to hero. It's not a zero to one approach. It's always about making progress as we build the feature out. The next one, um, you know, let's talk about learning to not be you know self-critical and appreciate yourself. Like the example in the last slide, um, you know, when a feature um, or its results don't go as planned, remember, you know, just, you know, be kind to yourself. Even if the feature doesn't win, take it as a learning opportunity and, and celebrate it. You should, you know, focus on the process from the launch, um, learn from it and, and move forward. Remember that uh, the destination is always, you know, not easy to reach, especially for a product manager. But, you know, when you enjoy the journey, the destination just becomes that much sweeter. And, you know, don't forget to tell yourself that you, know, you did a good job um, and just focus on learning forward. And I, I want to emphasize on this because like as a product manager, this will happen to you so many times in your career, possibly potentially on a daily basis, given just, you know, you're working on multiple features at a time or things can go wrong uh, due to factors that are external to you and your company. So you just have to take, you know, take it with a stride. The fifth one is um, overcoming imposter syndrome. You know, just have you ever felt like, you know, you, you didn't belong in, in a job or you didn't deserve the job? It just like felt really guilty about it. So you know, this is called imposter syndrome and it is loosely defined as uh, doubting your abilities uh, to do a certain job and basically feeling like a fraud. As a as a product manager, it is very common to feel this way, mostly because our job is is very chaotic, it's very vague, and it's hardly defined with a structure. You know, you have ownership ownership of, over a lot of different aspects of your product, and you know it changes day to day, minute to minute, feature to feature. Um, so the lack of that structure sometimes makes you feel like you don't know what you're doing. One day, you know everything. Another day, you know nothing about your job. Um, and you need to remember that, you know, you're not alone. This happens to all product managers. Um, this happens to everybody, no matter who they are, what job they're in. Everybody's learning on the job. Um, and secondly, recognize, you know, recognize and when you feel guilt and manage it. You know, tell yourself again that you're deserving um, of this job because, you know, which is why I did in the first place. So just be kind to yourself. And the next one is um, how to overcome overcorrection. So everybody, um, you know, no matter who they are, they receive feedback in their job um, or, you know, as part of their performance review. Um, from time to time, they do receive feedback. But for a product manager, it's a little bit different because we receive feedback almost every day whether it is from our customers not letting, making our feature or, you know, another team not being able to prioritize our info, um, excuse me, prioritize the features or, you know, not having all the info um, for or you know, stakeholders not feeling aligned with their roadmap, you know, feedbacks comes to us in all different shapes and forms. It can get overwhelming, um, but it's important again to remember uh, you know, just not to, you know, react immediately, not react emotionally or overcorrect immediately after getting the feedback. Understand what the feedback is and where it's coming from. And, you know, just take the feedback constructively, listen to what is being said and apply it in a way that makes sense for what you're doing for your product. Don't just blindly apply the feedback for you at work. You need to, you know, take a step back, uh, reflect on the feedback and then react accordingly. And the last one to overcome um, is expecting perfection from others. If anything, this is the most important trait um, to have as a product manager 
is not expecting perfection from everybody else because 100% of your tasks are cross-functional. So you work with uh, many, many different teams, many different people. You will rarely work on something by yourself, just by yourself. Um, So when we work with so many different people and different teams, each team and each person, they have their own processes, they have their own working styles. So some ways to manage expectations, um, you know, from for yourself and for everybody else is when working with different teams or people, be clear in what you're asking for. So, you know, what do you need from them? Why do you need it? When do you need it by? Is there a specific format or template to what you're asking? You know, et cetera, things like that. Two, if it is a you know long task that is going to take several days or weeks, have intermittent touch points with the folks on the team to see the progress of the task. So, you know, in case it's not going the right direction, you can always stop and pivot the team in the right direction. This is better than waiting till the end and realizing that, you know, it hasn't gone the way that you wanted it. Three, um, you know, and, you know, you need to manage your own expectations. Um, Again, like I said, not everybody works uh, like you or in the same pace as you. Some people are faster, some people are slower than the way they work. Um, So accept that things will be a bit different and you need to communicate with your team to work in harmony with them. And lastly, um, you know, be patient while you learn to work with the team, because as you're learning, they're also learning to work with you. So that is the end. Uh, thank you all for, uh, you know, for your time today. I'd encourage each and every one of you to think about, uh, you know, what perfectionist traits you have, even if it's, you know, a, a fraction of it. And think about how that affects your um, everyday life and work. Uh, shoot me a message on LinkedIn if you have any questions or you'd like to chat. Thank you, everybody.